Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. We can sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy your treasures from you with a cash offer on the table today. Go on. You want it, really? I do want it. You know I want it. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, no way, Jose. Don't accept that. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We might just get you a little bit more money there. We're in the room at 1.30 and selling. I'm going to be on hand at all times to help and advise the members of the public, so you've got nothing to fear. Today, the show comes to you from Warrington in Cheshire. There's a huge crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. Well, you know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. So, with such a great turnout, there's a lot for our dealers to get their teeth into. And it's Jean who's brought Tim Hogarth his first item of the day. Now you've brought a watch along today. Yes. Is it, is it your watch? No, it's my husband's. Does he know you're selling he it? He does, yes. Are you sure? <laughs> Absolutely sure. And did you buy it for him? Well, we bought it together. You must be very compatible, cos I couldn't buy a watch for my wife. We'd be arguing <laughs> and bickering non-stop. <laughs> Oh, no. We picked it together. Well, that's nice. Now, I would say that it dates from the 1970s. Mm -hmm. um, would that be sort of like the right time that you well, bought it? was the it? 90s that we bought it. Oh, right, you bought it in the 90s. 90s. So yeah. did you buy it second-hand, then? We bought it in a jeweller's shop in, yes, in South yeah. America. And it's by a company called Beaugerard. Mm. It's a Swiss watch. Mm. And the strap and, and, and the case is nine-carat gold. Yes. Probably a little bit sort of... Dated mm -hmm. to today's mm -hmm. terms, although the 1970s it's sort of coming back into fashion. Yes. You know, give it a couple more years, it'll probably be the height of fashion again. It does look nice on the wrist, though. Does it? <laughs> well, shall I try it on? <laughs> it is nice, yes, actually. Yeah. It's quite mm. weighty as well, isn't yes, it? It's quite yes. a bit of weight. Mm. Right, well, do you want me to try and yes, buy please. it off you, Jean? Mm. See what you can do. Have you got any idea of what it's worth? I have an idea, yes. I, I knew you'd have an yes. idea. <laughs> 50. 100. 150. 2. 250. 3. 350. 400. 450. 5. No, I wanted more than that. You were very definite there. Definitely, very yes. Very definite. Yes. Hello, David. Tick-tock. <laughs> <laughs> um, a rather smart watch. Beaugerard, mm -hmm. very good me. Six to seven hundred pounds is what the independent valuers are saying. Now, I still think that's a, a retail saleable item, but the interesting thing, Tim, is it scraps at 690. I'm not advocating that it should be scrapped. Mm -hmm. I think that that is good enough to retail. Mm -hmm. 500, not a bad start. <laughs> that was a good start, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you had to spend money on it, I think it's worth spending money because I think that could retail at over a thousand pounds. Smiling over now, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> 550. Six. A bit more. Another one of those. 620. No, change that one for a red one. 650. A little bit more. Right, you've got to do. Thank you very much, Jane. Right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get the face cleaned up and I am going to make a profit on it, which is quite unusual for me to make a profit out of gold. So, fingers crossed, Timmy makes some money. Good luck, Tim. We'll find out later how you get on. Hi, Janet. Next up, Janet's hoping Brenda will take a shine to this eye-catching object. I bought a case. I'm not sure if it's a card case or a shoe case. It's been described as both. I paid £20 for it. I know what I want for it. Looks like Indian silver. We're going to investigate a bit more, I think. 
fabulous. Don't okay. you look the part? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And the haircut? Oh, yes. Well, I thought we'd look quite like sisters, really. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you brought something quite pretty for me to look at. Yes. I bought it about 15 to 20 years ago at a collector's fair, okay. which I go to a lot of. And I'm not quite sure if it's a card case or a shroot case. It's been described as both. What did you buy it as? I just bought it as a, a pretty object that I thought was very good value for what I paid for it. And you bought it as silver? Yes. Did you know what type of silver at that point? Indian silver. So they told you that? Well, I collect um, powder compacts as well, and I've got a lot of Indian silver powder compacts. So you knew? Very similar, yeah. OK. You can tell by just the working on it, which is superb. Yes. I mean, it's lovely, isn't it? I it thought really it was beautiful. Is very pretty. Yeah. And I'm not talking it up, I just like yes, it. Yeah. And it, because you collect compact, you were drawn to it straight away, exactly, weren't you? Exactly, yeah. It's really. not a card case, it's ah, right. a little cheroot case. Ah, it is a cheroot case. It is case, a cheroot right. case. So you would have had your handmade little cheroots. Yes. But we wouldn't use it as that today, would we? No. And we'd have to have, if we were used it as a card case, we'd have to have them specially made. That's true, yes. With very think... small cards. Yeah. So. I'll get my purse out. OK. I, Why did you look like that? Because I've seen you, and I know that you're the lady who does the shutting of the purse. I do. Yes, I But know. it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. No, no. we're not going to the dentist. That's true, That yeah. was a real frown. <laughs> <laughs> OK. 10, 20, 30 pounds. No. wonder what you paid for it. How long ago? 15 years, perhaps a bit more. 15 years, wow. 35 pounds. You paid a lot. I know what I paid, I know what I want, and that's nowhere near what I want. But whether you get it, it's another Ex way. Well, that's it, yes, yeah. OK, I'm not going to mess about. We're going to go 40 pounds. What do we think? Oh, I think you're getting some advice now. Right, so I'll tell you what we think. Okay. We think we're not happy with that. Not at all, no. You know, this Indian silver, it's starting to get recognised and come into its own. It can be very beautiful and the decoration can be quite exquisite. 70 to 100, 80 to 120 is what our independents are saying. I think that's well worth somewhere close to 100 quid. I'm going to say in this case, get off to auction and let's see what someone in the room is prepared to pay. It is exquisite. Thank you. He's pulling it up again. I've he got is. no chance, Sorry. have I? <laughs> no chance. Sixty pounds. That's my offer. Is that better? It is. Um... Ooh, now she's thinking. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it to auction then. Will you? If you, don't mind. you just want a day out with David, don't yes, you? Yes, it'll be very nice. Thank Good you. luck to you. Thank you very much. Georgian silver, I can sell. Victorian silver, when it comes to Indian silver, it's really much more difficult for me. But before we head to the sale room, let's hear what auctioneer Matt Blackmore thinks. It's a pretty piece, and somebody will buy it, I'm sure, in the region of. 60, 70, 80 pounds. Time to join David to see who's right. So 15 years ago, you bought this item. What did you pay for it? I paid 20 pound after a lot of haggling. Why did you turn down 60? Because I love it. I don't want it to set go for 60. And I have, in the meantime, been offered 100 for it, but from a friend, actually. We've moved up to 100 pounds reserve. It is more than what our independent value has said and our auctioneer and we might just be pushing it a little bit, but it is a very nice quality item, so let's see what happens. 274A is a little white metal cigarette case. All auctioneers must use that term, white metal, if it's not clearly marked as silver. 80 pounds, start me at 80 pounds. Any interest at 80, any interest, start me at 60. Any interest at 60, 60 bid at 60 pounds. 65, 70, 75, 80. It's creeping. 85, 90, 95. Would you sell at 95? No. No? Leave it there, then. Here's a lady that knows her own mind. £100 reserve, or I'm not going to sell it. It got up to 95 in the room, and she said, no, I'm not going to sell it. 
I've got permission to take off that. So you're taking it home. You're happy about that? Yes, perfectly, yeah. OK. Yeah. I'm still going to award the real deal here in the sale room at £95. Even though the gavel did fall, there was a genuine bidder here, and that was the real deal. And Janet's still a winner. She can now sell the case to her friend for £100. Back in the den, Helen Gardner is facing a predicament. I'm a bit ambivalent about buying medals because I think the po of the poignancy attached to them, so I don't find it an easy thing to be buying and selling. Can Lorraine convince Helen to buy this pair? You've brought in some service medals from the First World War today. They belong to my husband's father. He passed away in 1958. Private noble. He, he was born the... in 1896 and he fought in the First World War. You've got the diary attached to these medals. Now tell me about that. I have, and there's a, an excerpt in the diary. Um, my father-in-law was in Eeps, so that Great was Great battle a, fought at Eeps. It was a good mm. battle. You're giving that to the Seaforth Highlanders. They've got an We have actually it. taken it to the Seaforth Highlanders. Yeah and they have written down the, the information exit. from the diary. Now, that's very, very touching. But my husband doesn't particularly want to keep the medals. No. He's quite happy to let them go. I always find it quite poignant looking at medals, the service medals, uh, especially when we're looking at the history of the First World War and what a tragedy it was. And I find it very difficult to value things like that because how can you put a value on you know, it's somebody risking their life? But. I'll put some money on the table and we'll see where we go. There's 20, 40, 60 pounds. How do you feel about that? I think they may be worth a little bit more. I'll put another 10 pounds down. So there's 70 pounds on the table. Yeah. Here's David. Well, I, Hello, I heard David. what Helen said and these medals are very, very personal and there's a time when we have our own boys even today going overseas into conflicts and we are losing boys, I think medals really come to the front and we realise the sacrifice people make for the country. Now, the estimation on these is terribly low. They've said 30 to 40 pounds. I don't think you will do better with the deduction of a commission by going to auction. And so I'm going to say on this occasion, Helen's looked after you very well indeed. Thank you, David. What have you decided, my dear? Well, I think with David's information, mm -hmm. I think maybe that is a very good price and I would accept well, your offer. Well, thank right. you so thank much. Thank you very much. It's been a privilege to see them and to buy them. Thank you very much. There is a market for militaria and if I get my money back, I'll be happy on those medals. My father-in-law was actually my husband's uncle and he was adopted by him. So now we'll have a little holiday with the proceeds and enjoy it and remember him. That's very sweet. Coming up, has our seller Andy got the wrong end of the stick? I think it's Adam and Eve, isn't it? Is it supposed to be Adam and Eve? I think so. That one could pass as a yeah, woman. I mean, I often pass off as a woman, so don't worry about it. You know? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Warrington. Ian Towney has a mystifying object at his table. It's my grandma's walking stick. It's got good age. It's going to rock it, hopefully, and I get the best value I can for it. Well, I think it's fantastic. I love it, and I hope I can buy it. David and auctioneer Max Blackmore are standing by to make sure that this deal doesn't come unstuck. Where did you acquire it from? Well, it's my granddad's, and he got it off his great-great-granddad. And apparently it was from, he worked on the docks in uh, Kent and he got it from there somewhere and that's all we know really of it. So and you're saying that this would be sort of early 19th century? That's what my grandmother thinks, yeah. It doesn't look that early. I can only go by what you're telling me, that yeah. you know. It's very interesting. I mean, when you look at it, there's this serpent wrapped around it. Then you've got these two gentlemen on the top. I think it's Adam and Eve, isn't it? Is it supposed to be Adam and Eve? I think so. I don't know. Very crude That's what he thinks. Adam said and that Eve. Was. See, that, I thought that was an apple, but, <laughs> but it looks more like but a pear. pear. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's a pear. So you have no idea where it could have originated from. No, none at all. N nothing. He he had it, and he was using it to walk around with. Apparently, it looks like African. Yeah. To yeah. me. See, what what is this made of? Do you think? I think it's ivory. Is it? I yeah. think it's ivory. Yeah. It looks like ivory. Yeah. You know, but it could be bone. Yeah. 
That one could pass as a yeah, woman. I mean, yeah. I often pass off as a woman, so don't worry about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that definitely, you know, I like it. It's always very difficult when you see items like this to know the age. I'm told by our specialists we have a Congolese witch doctor stick. Now, is it an old one? Is it a bit of old tat? What is it? I think it's, it's early tourist market, I think. A little bit of age to it. Certainly the, the pommel on the top does look like it's had a bit of wear. Yes. The blunt end, if you like, may have been either cut down or restored, I think. Yes. Estimate-wise, our independent values are saying 80 to 120. What are you saying? I was a bit less than that, 70 to 100. I, I okay. was a bit well, conservative. That, that sounds about right. Let's see what Ian thinks about it. Am I a walking stick person? Have to see if I know. Look into my eyes hey, and tell hey, me. Hey. Am I a walking stick person? <laughs> Hang on. Mm -hmm. I think you might. Just Am be, I? yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's 50 pounds? No, I think it's worth more. Uh-huh. Yeah. So let's say 100. That's it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> as far as we know, it's a witch doctor's stick. Oh, right. We think it's Congolese. Somewhere in that area, Central Africa. Yeah. We think it's 20th century. They're saying 80 to 120. I have no hesitation in saying that's a good buy to 100 quid. I don't think you will get any more if you went to the auction. And Ian wants to see if it works. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what do you think of my offer for 100 pounds? I think it's worth a little bit more. Well, there's another tenner. That's very generous of me. I was good. only going to give you 50 quid for it, and I've given you 110. Yeah, I've got a point of a tenner on? No, that's it. Are you sure? I'm positive. Well, I'll take that then. You and take uh, it. I hope it works for you. I hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They've agreed a deal at 110 pounds. I think on the day, it's probably a good price. What do you think? I, I think so as well, yeah. We'd, we'd have had to get 130, 140 to yeah. get him that net, so I think that's a good, good offer. I think it's earlier than the auctioneers or the valuers think it is. I think it's probably around 1830, 1840, when you think it belonged to his great-grandfather. So I think I got a very good deal here. Nice work, Ian. We'll find out later if the stick works its magic, making you a profit. Next up, seller Sheila's hoping her deal with Tim will be made without a song and dance. It's some theatre programmes, postcards, signed photographs as well. Hoping for lots of money, because it's not for me, it's for charity. Now, you've brought a massive collection here, yeah? Yes. As theatre memorabilia. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit how you acquired it? I'm manager of a charity shop in Manchester, mm. and these were donated. That's good for your charity, yeah. isn't it? What yeah. charity is it? It's Life Charity. We provide free counselling for crisis pregnancies. Right. Uh, free equipment for young mums, families who are struggling, yeah. you know, the cots, prams, Very good. clothing. So, first of all, we've got this contract here. Yeah. It's for Violet Fairbrother. Mm. She was a Shakespearean actress. Mm. And that's the so contract. So, is that her there. contract? That's from the Shakespearean companies, yeah. The Benson Shakespeare Company. So, she was earning three pounds for every performance in 1908. It was a lot of money, so she That's must have been quite a big theatre star. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very difficult to put a value on them. You see, these cards here, these were, like, given out, you know, you could buy them in the foyer of the right. theatre yeah. for, you know, very little money. So they will have been mass-produced. I suppose you're looking at sort of like Edwardian period, aren't you? It's a generation where you yeah. don't quite remember who, who the actors and actors were of that period before film, you say. Mm. Obviously, these people were massive stars in the theatre, but as the film industry got going, they, they will have been, you know, sort yeah. of forgotten. Yeah. I'll have a go, and I know it's for a good cause, so... 20, 30 pounds. I have to say, I think I'd want to stick at £30, really. I know it sounds a bit mean. Yeah. And I hate to be mean. No, no. Because I'm not, I'm not a mean person. Mm. Well, that's fine. Well, I think I would like to take it to auction and see you what want to get to there. Auction? I yeah. think probably. Tell you what I'm going to do, Sheila, because I think I've been a bit mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to 
take that tenner away and I'm going to give you a £20 donation for your charity. Thank you so much. And I hope you do really, really well at auction. Fingers crossed. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Also got a lovely £20 note off Tim. So, thank you very much, Tim. It's very, very much appreciated. I can certainly see a collector uh, being interested enough to pay £50, £60 pounds for these. I think they'll sell. We hope you're right, Max. It's all going to a good call, so let's see how much more can be raised. The auctioneer has already told me whatever this brings today, there will be no deduction of his commission, so everything will go to the charity shop. It's here in the sale room with a reserve of 45 quid. Are we going to sell it? Well, let's find out. A uh, collection of early 20th century ephemera. I can start this lot at 35 pounds. Straight in at 35 pounds. At 35, at 40. We're up to 50 on the net. 55, 60. Several bidders on the internet. 70, 70 pounds, 75, 80 pounds. 85. 85 on the internet now. Anybody else then, we're selling. Gavel has gone down at 85 quid. There are no deductions, and so the real deal is going to be 85 pounds. Your first reaction? Brilliant. Happy? Oh, oh, oh. That's good. That's it, yeah. The real deal was 85 pounds. To sell or not to sell, it's sold. That's the real deal. <laughs> Back in the dealer's den, Helen's next with a little silver inkwell. It's a little cabinet piece, really. It would only be for show on a desk. Very impractical in today's market, but I do like the item. It's very pretty. Alan, pleased to meet you. Now, this is a very pretty little inkwell. What can you tell me about this? Well, basically, my mother passed away early this year, and going through her belongings, we found it tucked away in a wardrobe. Wonder where she got it from? Well, a long time ago, she did a bit of cleaning for a local doctor, mm -hmm. and we thought it might have been a gift, a gift from him when he retired. You Possibly. know, something off his office desk or something like that. Maybe to remember him by. Yes. Okay, let me have a little bit of a look at this. I don't see any evidence that this has ever been used as an inkwell. That's what it is, but there's no staining. The glass is not at all stained. I don't know how much ink you would actually get in that. I think it's probably been from a little lady's escritoire. Very nice condition, could not be used today, but I do like the object. Made, I think, around, around the turn of the century, about 1902, so it's quite an early little thing, Edwardian. So, do you know how much money you want for it, Alan? Oh, as much as you're prepared to give oh, me. Well, well, how much do I want to pay for it? Mm. Let's see. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds, Alan. I think it's probably worth a little more than that. A little bit more? How about 90 pounds? Mm, and no I'm chance. kind of just about there, I can no. tell you. So you just won't round it to the 100? How about if I put down another fiver? How about 95, Alan? Get in there. Can't squeeze that other fiver off you. Go on. <laughs> you want it, really. I, I do want it. You know I want it. Look, there's your hundred pound. Am we going to have a deal? We are, yes, I think. Thank God, you very thank much you. for bringing it's us pleasure. in. Pleasure, thank you. Really pleased with that. Uh, I think it's a fair price for the object. Lovely man. Hope he spends the money wisely. <laughs> Still to come. I have sons. They're not interested in jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in jewellery. <laughs> and if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Among the Cheshire crowd bringing their antiques and collectibles in is Jeanette. She's looking to ring up a nice profit with Ian. I know that Ian's an expert in this area, so I'm looking forward to a fair deal. Six rings, gold price. Let's hope I can make a little bit of a profit and buy them. We have those three rings there, which are nine carat gold. And these three here, which are 22 karat gold, they all belong to you, I take Yes. It. They're all wedding rings that have belonged to either parents or grandparents, so they all have an intrinsic family value. Fam really. Family value. So why are you disposing of them? Nobody in the family wants them? 
I have sons. They're not interested in jewellery. <laughs> They're not interested in jewellery. Oh. <laughs> I'm not interested in jewellery. <laughs> I've calculated the weight, and you know, for me to make a, a profit on it, uh, I give you a fair offer. And um, if you accept it, fine. If not, you know, it's up to you what you'd like to do. Okay. Okay. Um, would you like all of this? <laughs> that would be very nice, yes, please. So, yeah. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550. I think that is a fair offer and allows me to make a certain margin on the items. Well, I've come in just to help you, but I think it's a very simple decision. And it comes down to the price of the precious metal. Mm -hmm. They aren't necessarily that commercial as individual items. And I am told by our independent valuers there is 560 or 570 pounds worth of gold. 550 is already on the table. Mm -hmm. That is a terrific price. It's right on the money. Thank you for making my life a lot easier. Ian. Thank you, David. <laughs> so, 550. Do you accept the offer? I do accept you do. it. You yes. do? Wonderful. Thank you. And what are you going to do with this money? I have no idea yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. A nice big piece of jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Thank you very much Thank for coming. You. Thank you. I was hoping to get about £500 for it, and Ian exceeded that, so I was quite happy. Next, a real deal favourite, and a name we're all familiar with. I brought my Connery to Cliff bars, and I've had it for years, protecting it, looked after it, and I brought it now in the hopes that I'm getting at least £60, if not more. And I'm really pleased to meet you. What? I, I'm Tim. Tim. The good looking one. Oh, yes. I agree with you. <laughs> now, this jug, do you know anything about it, Irene? Well, I've known it at Sonny's place. <laughs> All I've had it a long while. <laughs> I've been treasuring it. You've treasured it? Yeah. It's been in the wind. It's been in the wind downstairs, upstairs, and in the wardrobe. When oh, you look yes. at it, you wouldn't think that this was piece of Clarice Cliff. Now, it's not how you imagine Clarice Cliff to be, is it? Quite bright and, and jazzy. This pattern is called Celtic Harvest. Celtic Harvest. Celtic Harvest. And you've got these sheets yes. here and all yes. this up yeah. here. Yeah. Now, once upon a time, have you been emulsioning and got a bit of paint on it, Irene? Oh, yeah. Sealing. Do it sealing, haven't you? Now, did you buy this new? Oh, yes. Did you? Yes, and we bought it years ago. Did you buy it in the 1950s? Oh, it could have been. How much do you think it's worth today, Irene? Uh, I've given myself a rough idea. You've got a rough idea, yeah. Shall I see if I can help you to buy it? Oh, was that big good? 20. 40 pounds, Irene. Oh, I prefer a little bit more. I would, definitely. All right, Irene? Yes, look. Yes, I'm all right now, I'm at the table. All right. She's now, flirting with you now, Dave. Well, I think you've, you've come to raise a few quid for a few bills, haven't you? That's right. Right. 40 to 60, Clarice Cliff, but very late. Really, what's on the table is about what it's worth, I suppose. It might be worth another 10 or 15 quid. If you put yourself another tenner in there... Right. I'll swing in 20 quid. And then it'll go towards paying a few bills. Get well, another if you tenor. put 20 in, I'll put 20 okay, in, Okay, well, highly generous, as always, Tim. He's put another 20 in. Now you've got 80 quid. I'm going to say, darling, that's as good as you're going to get. Put that in your purse and take it home. Oh, that's very good of you. It's a great very pleasure. Good up, yeah. It's not easy out there, and we like no. to see uh, that people of a certain generation get the best price on this show. Oh, that's very nice of you. I'm very pleased Are with that. Are you pleased with that, Irene? Oh, yeah. So have we got a deal, Irene? Yes, sir. 
We are, definitely. Lovely. Are you feeling yeah. a bit emotional? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very You've much. You've done all right there. That was a real surprise. Yes. They both chipped in as well at the end, and it was lovely. Yes, I got what I wanted. You got the real deal, Irene. Coming up. Look at me, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you thinking away there. I'm thinking, oh, gosh, no, that doesn't go anywhere near it. Is Brenda running on empty already? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's the last deal of the day in Warrington. Brenda appears to have a bit of a jam at her table. Oh, my God, this takes me back to the late 60s, early 70s, when my kids were little. I bought all this stuff for them. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Brenda, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Whoa, does this take me back. I know. <laughs> wow. Tell me about your Matchbox toys. Um, well, my mum used to work for Lesney's. Oh, so really? each week she would buy me a different car or something from, from right. work. Yeah. Um, and I played with them a lot when I was small. So tell me, where's the where was the factory? The factory was in Hackney in London. Now, are we going back to about 1965 to 70 period? Um, yeah, or maybe even a little bit earlier. So a few would be a little 60s, bit earlier, yeah. early 60s. Right, the reason I say that is because my son was born in, I think, 73. Right. And, uh, you know, I bought him these little cases to keep them in and keep yes, them all tidy one, and to yeah. protect them. So unfortunately at his, we discarded the boxes because at that time we didn't think I know, I think girls are just gentler with their toys really. Yes. And I'd play with it and then put it back in its box. Good girl, good <laughs> it's girl. It's paid off. Yes. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> has. I quite like the, we're going on safari type. Yes. <laughs> and I love the vintage one. Yes. Yeah, they're a little bit later, those two. They are. Yeah. Fantastic. How many in total have we, have uh, we got? We've got 98. 98 in varying In varying conditions. degrees, yes. OK. All right. Shall I get some money out? Oh, yes. Um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I know what you're going to say. 120, 140, 160. Look at me, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you thinking away there. I'm thinking, oh, gosh, no, that doesn't go anywhere near it. <laughs> I will go up to 200. It's tempting. Here's the master. Right, well, there's 200 quid on the table. What are they worth? Well, it depends on the individual models. For instance, I think I spot an E-type there. That will be a very desirable one. Right. Some of them will be more desirable than others. OK. The estimation from our experts is 250 to 350. I think 200 is a rather nice start. I'm <laughs> checking. I'm, I'm checking not to see showing if you. the purse is closed. Because <laughs> um, there was a chance when it's open. Um, I, I think they're worth more. They seem to be in good condition, and because of that, I'm going to say there is a very good chance you could do well in a sale room. Right. OK. I will give you... 230 pounds. And that's my that's offer. That's your offer. Yeah. It's a very nice offer, but... but. I know what you're going to say now. I'm going to go to auction, Brenda. Auction. And I think you're very wise. And I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and find mine and start selling mine. I think that's a okay. good idea. Lovely to meet you. And you too. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I think it will be good to go to auction. I think, as they said, there may be some items that collectors don't have. Um, and would be really keen just to buy a, a lot just to get that one car. So, yeah, it'll be good fun. Let's find out if she can rev up more interest and cash in the sale room. The auctioneer has split these up into three consecutive lots. The first lot 
is nine cars and they're all boxed. The second lot is 18 cars and they are all boxed. And the final lot is unboxed, but there is 67 items. There are. And a case. And a case. Now, there is no reserve on the individual lots. They've got to make a reserve of £250 for the three lots. OK. They're coming up now. Let's see what they bring. Nine originally boxed Amoco Lesney 1960s cars. And I can start on commission with this lot at £50. Straight in at 50 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85. Commission's out now. We're up to 100, 110, 120, 30, 140. 140, first lot, miss. 150 pounds. 160 in the room now. 170, 180, 190, 200. 200, Brenda offered 230 for the lot. 30, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290. 300. You just never know. 300 pounds in the far corner now. 300 pounds in selling. The first lot made 300 pounds. We're coming up to the next lot. There are 18 boxed cars in this lot. Let's see what happens. I can start this lot at 60 pounds on commission. 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 110, 120. There's still hands all around the room. 50, 60. 170, 180, 190, 200, 210. They're up to 210, 220. 230, 40, 250, 60, 270, 280, 290, 300. It's now at 300. Fair warning. We are now at 600 pounds. We've swept away the reserve of 250 quid. We don't have to think about that anymore. It's a question of what will we get for the last lot and then deduct the commission. Yeah. And the next lot, a collection of 67 unboxed Leslie Matchbox Series vehicles. You've even got yourself a collector's case as well to carry your cars in. At £80 on commission, 85 90 95 100 110 120 130, I'm amazed how many people are interested. 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 30, 240, 50. This hands everywhere. 270, 280, 290, 300. Quite amazing. 20 now. 340, 360, 380, 400, 420, 440, 460, 480, 500, 520. <laughs> 540, 560, 580, 6, 620, 640. Brenda, 60, you made a big mistake, girl, here. She did, didn't I'm very glad you did. 780, 800, and 20, 840, 860, 880, 900, 920, 940, 960, 980, 1000. 1,050, 1,100, 1,100 pounds against the rest of you and the net, 1,100 pounds it is. Well, the gamble has gone down at 1,100 pounds. We already had 600 pounds for the first two lots, so we've got 1,700 pounds, and after the deduction of the commission, it's close to 1,400 quid. I mean, <laughs> you're as cool as a cucumber. There's not even that... I'm just very glad that they did so Absolutely well. Absolutely amazing. That's what I call <laughs> a cracking real deal. Katrina, you overtook all our expectations there. Well done. You've banked the biggest amount of cash of all our sellers today. But how did our dealers fare? Well, it was a mixed day. Brenda came bottom of the class. The scaredy cat bought nothing at all. Helen didn't fare much better. She sold the war medals to a collector for £75. Thank you. Very much for it's a pleasure. And a customer at her shop bought the silver inkwell. Not such a great day for Tim, but he was certainly in a charitable mood. I'm very pleased Are with you that. you pleased with that, Irene? And I'm going to give you a £20 donation for your charity. And his generosity was rewarded with a well-deserved £50 profit on the gold watch. Still not as good as Ian, who showed everyone how to do things properly. 
he invested £550 in the gold rings, which he sold on for £620. And remember that mystifying walking stick? I think it suits you. It's very you, I think. It's very me. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked its magic and made Ian more than a spellbinding 200% profit. Beat that. We've had an exciting day here in the sale room. There's been plenty of action. Lots of bidding and lots of buying. Now, that's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. TTFN, ta-ta for now.